I'm Andrew Chitty, I'm the AHRC's uh, Creative Economy Champion, and my job is basically just to welcome you to beyond. Um, so in true creative industries fashion, some of you are on time, and, uh, and obviously some people aren't. Uh, but we'll make a start. We've got a really exciting day. We've got some interesting perspectives. We've got some panels. Uh, we also, uh, this morning, uh, before, prior to the start of the, uh, of, of the conference, uh, with this, the official launch of the Creative Industries Clusters program. So we'll learn more about that during the day. So let's kick off. Um, the first thing that I'm very delighted to do is to introduce to you, uh, to start the day, Professor Andrew Thompson, who's the Executive Chair of the Arts and Humanities Research Council, who is the uh, kingpin and, and driving force behind the investment in the creative industries, uh, uh, research and innovation that we've managed to achieve so far. So Andrew, please come and tell people what it's about. Well, uh, good morning and uh, let me uh, add my warm words of welcome to everybody. Um, it's a very special day for the Arts and Humanities Research Council. Uh, the Beyond Conference is to launch our Creative Industries Cluster Programme as key components of the government's industrial strategy and also the sector deal for the cultural and creative industries. This is an £80 million programme comprised of nine research and development partnerships between universities and creative businesses and it also sets up a new independent policy and evidence centre, a powerful new resource to provide much needed data, evidence and analysis for this dynamic and fast growing part of our economy. The Creative Industries Clusters programme is seeking to build strategic R&D partnerships between universities, creative enterprises and other relevant sectoral stakeholders including the Creative Industries Council and the very many organisations who are represented here today. It's seeking to enable micro and small and medium-sized enterprises and large creative and digital enterprises to access the world-leading and specialist knowledge in our universities spanning the arts and design, the digital, coding and computer sciences. It's seeking to supply a new generation of researchers with a highly sought after fusion of these creative and digital skills. And seeking to provide an environment for the production of new experiences and experimental creative content and products and services. So this is all about research with and for our cultural and creative industries. It's all about identifying industry-defined challenges where collaborative research can lead to adding demonstrable and measurable outcomes for economic productivity and industry growth. And over the next five years, we want to build an R&D workforce adept at working across universities, businesses and creative practice. But I wouldn't be doing my job this morning if I didn't ask the question and try and answer it, why is all of this so important to us? Well, in no small part, because the cultural and creative industries are set to become a bigger, much bigger part of our economic futures, even if as a country, we're still playing catch up with that fact. But more than that, I think, because the two forces driving the economy forward over the longer term, globalization and technology, are having significant social consequences. Creating greater interconnectedness and convergence between societies, sure, but sometimes also creating sharper divisions within them. Blurring the lines between the physical and simulated worlds and also between our online and our offline lives. Stretching the boundaries of emotion and posing searching questions about what being human truly involves. So this is partly about economic benefit, but it's equally about the societal. What Sir Peter Bazalgette referred to earlier this morning 
as the social and cultural dividend that comes from our cultural and creative industries. From the power of narrative and storytelling and the visual which is embedded in those industries to introduce new ideas and voices into debates, to help us discover new worlds and to navigate and negotiate cultural difference and diversity, to help us understand people's lives who may be very different to the lives of our own, to confront rather than erase our pasts, even when they're difficult pasts, to improve the present and set the stage for the future and to teach us a fundamental truth about the human condition, namely the need to live with complexity. If the Creative Industries Clusters Program and the new R&D projects and the Policy and Evidence Centre represented in this room can contribute to these wider and vital societal challenges, as well as the important, very important economic objectives of the program over the next five years, we really will have made a difference and have an industry strategy challenge fund program to be very proud of. Thank you very much. So I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Alex Vincent, who formerly was our associate director heading up the creative industries in the Arts and Humanities Research Council and has been newly promoted to our chief operating officer and she's going to talk to you in a bit more depth and detail about the programme. Thank you. Hello and good morning. Well, just over a year ago, I joined the Arts and Humanities Research Council as the senior responsible owner for the Creative Industries Clusters programme. And today marks the end of a, of a particular journey, but actually really it's only the start. So as you've heard earlier this morning, we officially launched our nine creative R&D partnerships and the Policy and Evidence Centre that has been funded through the programme. Um, this is one of the investments underpinning the government's industrial strategy um, and also forms part of the creative industries sector deal. But these creative R&D partnerships will help actually grow the UK economy by working with industry to create new products, experiences, services and jobs. The Policy and Evidence Centre will ensure that the sector and policymakers alike have the robust data and evidence about the challenges and opportunities facing creative industries. We really will, through this programme, make a difference to the creative industries and the diverse sectors within the creative industries. But when you launch a big investment like this, it's really easy to forget the process that the successful and unsuccessful bidders have been through. And it's been quite a process. They've worked for well over a year to get to this point where we are launching them today. At the end of 2017, we had 65 statements of um, intent to submit an application for, to run one of the creative R&D partnerships. That was whittled down to just 45 full bids at the first stage to 22 bids at the second stage. And then just 12 were invited to interview. When we proposed this programme to the Department of, of Business, Energy and Invi uh, Industrial Strategy, nobody could see the demand that was there. We knew it was there, and I think all of you knew it was there. Um, I think everybody involved in the process, whether it's the bidders or those involved in the peer review, will remember the process for being a lot of paper. There was a lot of paper involved in the process, whether it was the blood, sweat and tears invested in preparing the bids or even in reviewing them. But the quality of those bids was such that we could have invested many, many times over. But as ever, money is finite, and so we had to select just these nine successful R&D partnerships and the one policy and evidence center. These investments are based on research excellent, excellence and also strong, equitable industry partnerships. Each of them promises to be a step change for the sector they're working in, whether screen, games, fashion, data informatics, or immersive technologies. With such a good geographic spread across to all the investments, across all of the nations of the UK, we can make sure that the reach and impact really is felt across the UK. Now, for the Arts and Humanities Research Council, we don't just stop there. We'll continue to work with all of these investments over the next five years to ensure that they really do deliver on the promises that were included in those bids. 
This really is the start of the process to ensure that we demonstrate the real contribution that these investments will make to the UK economic growth, um, that the dynamic creative industries really do have the potential to do. But this can't be the only investment that we make in the creative industries, and we've seen the demand for investments like this. This has to be just the start. There's so much more that we can do beyond the Creative Industries Clusters programme. So hopefully today the discussions will open up some of those other avenues, and I'm really looking forward to um, hearing some of the different avenues we can take. Um, this programme's just the start. It's a really phenomenal occasion to be here launching it. Um, but now, I'm just as delighted to introduce Professor Anthony Lilly, who's going to be your Master of Ceremonies for the rest of the day.